Hi, uh, just putting out some more videos. Hopefully this will work. Um, slightly different format. Uh, and I want to talk you through uh, some one of the questions from the problem set. And I have some PowerPoint slides to help explain it relevant to public goods. And yeah, I think it's, it's a relevant problem for uh, revising. So let me just pull up that uh, problem set. It's uh, from problem set um, four. Okay, and I have the PowerPoint up in a second. Okay, here we are, problem set four. So the one I wanted to go over, I hope this shows on the screen, is the one that I called not, not 16, uh, seven. There it is. Okay, so I wanted you to solve it first with marginal cost of 180 per unit. That's much more standard, much more conventional. Um, and it illustrates the 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 public goods important characteristic and then do it with as the book suggests marginal cost equal to 50. okay just checking i'm still recording here yep okay so it says suppose the demand curves referred to are as discussed in the lecture the amount an individual consumer would purchase if she knew no one else would purchase any of the goods remember this is not the same as her marginal benefit curve her marginal benefit, sorry, remember that this is the same as her marginal benefit curve, her marginal benefit of the total amount provided Q. So with public goods, each person gains benefit from the sum of the provision or amount purchased by each individual. Okay, so, and also assume here that these marginal benefit curves will never become negative. And by the way, if you looked at the book's answer, I think they're assuming, the book's answer basically assumes that the marginal cost curves become, marginal benefit curves become negative, which doesn't really make sense in this case. Okay, so I'm going to answer the question, but replacing the marginal cost with 180 first. Suppose there's only two people in society. The demand curve for person A for mosquito control is given by QA equals 100 minus P. So we have QA is equal 100 minus P. I'm just checking that this is coming up on the, on the board. Hopefully you can see the board here. This is a bit of a challenge. Okay, um, so how do I interpret QA equals 100 minus P? Well, if I think of this as a demand curve, I think given the price, this is the quantity person A would purchase. Now, given the context that this is a public good, I'm going to interpret that as the amount that he or she would purchase, assuming that the other would purchase none. Okay, and what happens, okay, so now, as I've discussed many of the time, the demand curve can also be interpreted, at least the individual demand curve, downward sloping. It tells me a price, a quantity. It tells me a quantity that the person would purchase at each price. Um, and at a, for a given price, they'll purchase units until their marginal benefit of that last unit is just at the amount they have to pay for it. They're no longer getting any benefit over and above the amount they pay for it. Okay. Um, but then, um, coming back to the question, uh, but I can also think of it as, so because they're only going to purchase units until their marginal benefit of that unit is equal to the amount they have to pay for it, and that tells me the quantity that I should think about, then I could equivalently think, okay, the demand curve, the amount the individual would purchase alone if facing these prices, uh, also expresses for each quantity the maximum amount they'd be willing to pay for that last unit, i.e. their marginal benefit of that last unit. Okay. Um, so because of that, I can then express the marginal benefit curve Okay, so I will, in, it, I can re-invert this to get the marginal benefit curve. Um, okay, so I can say, all right, why don't I, I'll, I'll erase this and redraw it from scratch. It's much better that way. So I'll say we have person A, if they were the only one purchasing, would purchase the amount described by this. 
I can also think about it as uh, the pr maximum price they'd be willing to pay for that last unit is equal to uh, 100 minus QA. Um, and I could also think about it as their marginal benefit for person A for each unit Q is equal to 100 minus Q. Now, why did I sub in Q for QA here? Well, as this is a public good, the thing that should tell you about the person's mark, they're benefiting, it doesn't matter whether they purchase the good or the other person or anyone purchased the good. What matters to them is the amount of the good being provided by someone. They benefit from the total amount of the good provided. So Q, we'll call Q equals QA plus QB. Okay. Therefore, um, the person, this person A gains, let's say, 100 from the first unit of Q provided by so either her or the other person, 99 approximately for the next unit, 98 for the next unit, etc., etc. Okay, but I want to say one thing that's important here. Um, the what happens if more than Q units are more than 100 units are provided for this person? We could either assume that they start disliking it, that they get negative benefit. Uh, which doesn't make sense for this question because mosquito control doesn't seem like something I would ever dislike. Um, or we could consider that they just get zero benefit. Okay, so actually what we mean here, we say, so this person's demand curve and their marginal benefit curve uh, What we really mean here is that this describes their demand curve for the, sorry, their marginal benefit for the first 100 units they, that is purchased by someone. But after 100 units, after 100 minus Q equals zero, they don't get a negative marginal benefit. They just get a zero marginal benefit. Okay. Now for the other person, we could, we can say, speak similarly. Let's go back to the problem. The second person has this marginal benefit of mosquito control 200, uh, 200 minus P. QB is 200 minus P. So for each unit, at least up to the first 200 units, that person gets um, more benefit per unit than the first, than, than person A. So let's do similarly for person B. So just let me just re finish, restate person A and put it over here. Q, so we said QA equals 100 minus P, and we inverted that to marginal benefit of A for the total units Q is equal to 100 minus Q of that Q num unit number Q. Okay, and, um, but that's only, let's say that's only where Q, if Q less than or equal to 100, right? After that hundredth unit, their marginal benefit is just zero. Uh, so it's equals to zero, equals to zero otherwise, if Q greater than 100. Okay, now what about person B? Um, we have QB equals, it states 200 minus P. So we reinvert that to get marginal benefit for person B of the total amount provided Q, because as we said, doesn't matter who provides it. It's a public good. It's a non-rival. I gain, I benefit just as much by your provision as I do for my own provision. So that will equal to 200 minus Q. This is an algebraic two steps that I think you should be able to follow. Okay. But again, we want to put bounds on that. So this is if this is positive. So if Q less than or equal to 200, otherwise equal to zero, if Q greater than 200. Now I could plot these and show you how to add it, but let me, but let me um, move to the PowerPoint because I think it's cleaner there. Okay, so here's the PowerPoint that I've given for this, I believe, um, or at least it's a, it's a similar diagram. All right, so um, all right, the numbers are slightly different here. So do I give one for the actual example in the problem set? I thought I did. I'm sorry. Okay, but it, I give an equivalent example. Okay, so person A 
has this marginal benefit. I'll use the marker pen. Person A has this marginal benefit. Okay, but we could replace this number with 100. Okay, and person B has this much greater marginal benefit. Okay. Um, but after 7.5 units in this case, in our case, after in our case, after 100 units, only person B is getting any benefit. Okay. So, right, after, in our case, 100 units, um, in the case for the problem, 100 units, let's say this is 100, uh, person A no longer gains benefit from that, but person B continues to. Okay, we see that, we see that here. Okay, so, um, now, what we want to do to answer the question as it's asked is to add up the social marginal benefit, okay? But the case we have here in this problem is most similar to uh, this case, okay? Just change the numbers a little bit. Okay, just give me a second. Just want to grab the black pen. I love a black pen. Okay, so... Um, marginal benefit marginal benefit of a in our case was equal to 100 minus q a minus q where q less than or equal to 100 zero otherwise zero where Q greater than 100 for B it was equal to 200 minus Q where Q less than or equal to 200 zero otherwise we don't have to work we won't have to worry about that we can draw it for each so for person a Maybe make it a bit lower. 100, slope negative 1. It'll intercept here. This is marginal benefit, price, cost, whatever. This is total quantity. Okay, for person for person B, let's put, put her in blue. Person B got um, 200, or their, their, their marginal benefit started at 200 and also has a slope of negative 1. It'll hit the intercept at 200 quantity. After 200 units, they no longer gain a marginal benefit. Okay, so note that between 100 units and 200 units, for units provided between 100 and 200, only person B is getting marginal benefit, is getting any benefit for those additional units. Okay, so similarly in this diagram here, okay, so we see that in this case, person B is only, this is person A's benefit, this is person B's marginal benefit. We see that person A gets benefits in their case up to the 7.5 unit, in our case up to the 100th unit, and uh, Person B gets benefit up to the 10th unit in their case, in our case, up to the unit number 200. Okay. So, uh, okay. So then what about, what about, so these are their, their private marginal benefits. What about the social marginal benefit? Well, I've just, I've moved the private marginal benefits over to this other line, put them on the same axis, on the same, on the same, uh, yeah, on the same graph. And we want to add up the private marginal benefits vertically, okay? 
For each quantity, we need to add up A's benefit and B's benefit. However, we need to do this carefully because we need to be careful that we're look that in this region, we're adding up both of their benefits. And in this region, we're adding zero for A because A no longer gets any benefit past point 100 in our example or past point 7.5 in the example in the, in the PowerPoint. Okay, so how do I add these up uh, algebraically in our, in, our, uh, in our example, the problem set example? Well, I say, okay, so let's first look where Q is less than or equal to 100. I need to add up 100 minus Q and 200 minus Q. So the social marginal benefit of Q is equal to 100 minus Q uh, plus 200 minus Q. where Q less than or equal to 100, actually where Q is positive and less than or equal to 100, but let's not worry about negative Q. So this is equal to add the 100 and the 200, 300 minus 2Q, where Q less than or equal to 100. All right, so it shall start at point 300. So obviously, okay, I haven't left quite enough room here. Um, let me, just to, to make sure there's enough room, I'll make 200 a bit lower on this graph. So here's our good old 200. So here, this will be the social marginal benefit. It'll start at 300, adding 100 and 200 for these first units. Then it'll have a steeper slope. It's got a slope of negative two, steeper slope than either of these because they're both losing value or both not losing value, but gaining less value from each additional, less marginal value from each additional unit. Okay, now this will have uh, the slope negative two only until we get to which point? Only until we get to the point 100. Because after 100, we need to add something different. We need, or we don't, okay, so after 100, for Q greater than 100, we just need to, so this is equals 300 minus 2Q, where Q less than equals to 100. And after the point 100, we just add 0 and 200 minus Q. So obviously, 0 plus 200 minus Q is just 200 minus Q, because after 100, only the second guy is getting any benefit. Okay, so I'll just erase that 0 because it looks kind of dumb. So it's equals to 200 minus Q, where Q greater than 100, and then after 200, it'll just equal 0. Um, but I won't, uh, sorry, this should be 200 then, because I've rescaled it, 200. Okay, but I won't, that's not going to be important for this problem. Okay, so after point 100, the slope at, is, by, and the slope is just negative, negative one. So it's just shallower slope until we get to point 200, where then neither get any benefit. Okay, neither get any benefit from additional units past 200. Um, if I were to project B, this is social marginal benefit of B, B social marginal benefit onto this graph, it just looks like this. So for the first 100 units, B's social marginal benefit, let's make it blue, and here it's going to overlap, B's social marginal benefit will be, sorry, B's marginal benefit will be less than the social marginal benefit, because the social marginal benefit will add A's benefit and B's mar A's marginal benefit and B's marginal benefit. After point 100, the social marginal benefit, so this black line is the social marginal benefit of Q. After point 100, the social marginal benefit will actually equal just marginal benefit of B, because B is the only one getting any additional value for these units. Okay. We've plotted this. Um, I could also look at what point this, what um, marginal benefit is at this point 100. So it's, well, it's, it's just gonna be, uh, well, 300 minus two, two Q, 300 minus 200, it's also gonna be 100. Okay, now let's go back to what the problem is asking. Suppose mosquito control is a non-exclusive good. That is, once produced, everyone benefits from it. What would be the optimal level of this activity if it could be produced at a constant marginal cost of 50 per unit? Okay, just making sure I'm still on camera here. 
Okay, if it could be produced at a constant marginal cost of 50 per unit. Um, but I want to first look at it for 180 per unit, okay? Because 50 per unit is going to be a bit tricky and, and not characteristic of the public good. Marginal cost is 180 per unit, okay? So let's put this marginal cost thing here, 180. So 180. Marginal cost. Marginal cost. In the... Diagram, it's it's eight, but it's a it, in the in the PowerPoint, but it's but it's the equivalent. Okay, let's put it here. One eighty, one eighty. Okay, this point was two hundred. This point is one eighty. Okay, so note where it intersects the. Sorry, this says social marginal benefit of B. I, I meant just marginal benefit of B. Note where it intersects the marginal benefit of B, okay? Note also where it intersects social marginal benefit, okay? It intersects social marginal benefit at a larger quantity than it intersects the B's marginal benefit, okay? Um, okay, again, ask, going back to what the question is asking, uh, what would be the optimal level if it could be produced at, well, let's say 180 per unit, okay? Well, we see in the... In the, di the messy diagram I've just drawn, that we, we know that the social benefit of the first unit is 300, the next unit is going to be 298, because it's got a slope of negative 2, etc., etc. But the social marginal benefit exceeds the marginal cost for all units produced until we get to this point, whatever this point is, where, marginal, where social marginal benefit equals the marginal cost. Okay, it's, it's this point here, Q star in the uh, PowerPoint, okay? For our case, let's compute it, okay? We know, so now this will be within the range where the social marginal benefit adds both, because we're talking about, is it, this is gonna be at a point uh, less than 100. So the social marginal benefit will add the marginal benefit of both A, marginal benefit of A and B, okay? So the social marginal benefit will be 300 minus two Q here in our example, let's make sure I'm still on the board. Okay, and 300 minus 2Q, so we want to find where the social marginal benefit equals the marginal cost in this case. So we have 300 minus 2Q equals to 180. Okay, so we can do a little algebra here. Let's subtract uh, 180 from each side. So we get 120 minus 2Q equals zero. Subtract 2Q from each side, 120 equals 2Q. Divide both sides by Q, Q by 2, Q, or Q star, if you like, the optimal amount is equal to 60. And that's the answer given in the, in the, in the, in the, yeah, the, hand, the answer key. Well, not the, my answer key, okay? So this point is point 60, Q star equals to 60, All right? Note at this point, both are still getting a marginal benefit. Uh, we could also think about what's the total uh, benefit these guys are getting. Well, the, you know, they're getting, add up all the area under here. If you want to talk about the net benefit, subtract, uh, subtract, well, it's a constant marginal cost, and let's assume no fixed costs, subtract this rectangle of fixed cost. Okay, next question. If mosquito control were left to the private market, how much might be produced? Does your answer depend on what each person assumes the other will do? Okay. So, well, let's think back. What do we mean by left to the private market? Okay. What we mean is there's no coordination between the two of them. Okay. In other words, A is going to choose how much amount A would want to provide. B is going to choose how much B wants to provide. Uh, there's a question whether they know how much the other is going to choose. That might be a relevant question, might be a relevant question. Um, but it's not, the, there's nothing guaranteeing that they're, they're not going to take the other's interests into account. Okay, so let's look at what would A do? Well, if no matter what A thinks B is going to choose, in this case, even if B were to choose zero, the maximum of A's marginal benefit does not equal the marginal cost. So A would choose to provide none of this public good if its marginal cost is 180, uh, he would choose to provide none of it voluntarily. Now, what would B do? Okay, well, 
if B thought that A was going to provide none, which seems like a reasonable assumption, you can try to put into this, ah, wait a second, A seems to have a dominant strategy. So now returning to this with a little bit of game theory, we can think about iterated strict dominance, at least the logic of it, okay? So A's got a dominant strategy, A's never going to contribute. So B reasonably thinks A is rational, he's not going to put any, he's not going to buy any of this, he's not going to contribute to this public good. Given he's not going to contribute to this public good, what should I do? Well, I actually, my benefit as B of the first unit of the public good is greater than its marginal cost. So I will provide some of this public good. How much? Well, B is going to look to find the point where his, his own or her own personal private marginal benefit equals the marginal cost. Keep purchasing units until these are equal. So we have, can I hope you can see it here. So marginal benefit of B in this range is 200 minus Q. So B sets 200 minus Q equals to 180. Obviously B would choose Q equals, or he's choosing QB, but he's the only one providing it. So it becomes big Q. He would choose Q equals to 180. Okay. Sorry, not Q equals to 180, Q equals to 20. 20, 200 minus 20 is equal to 180. Okay, and we can see it on this diagram. We can see it on the, the axis here where Q's benefit, the blue line, is equal to the marginal cost. And we see that this point, obviously here it's 20, is less than the socially optimal point of 60. Okay, and we can get so intuition for that by, is it, suppose that there's this amount uh, of the public good being purchased or provided by B, we see that at this point, the social mar even though B's marginal benefit no longer exceeds the marginal cost, the social marginal benefit still does. So in fact, if we have private provision in this case, and in you know a general set of cases, there will be a value lost. I could think of this red triangle here. It's hard to see perhaps, uh, because all of these units provide more in total benefit to society, total social marginal, total, yeah, the provide more in social marginal benefit, an additional benefit to, to A plus B than they cost, okay? So this illustrates the inefficiency. This value could be generated. It could presumably be shared between A and B, that value, so we could get to a more efficient point. So this point is perhaps not Pareto optimal, okay? This is going long. Okay. Uh, now it says, does your answer depend on what each person assumes the other will do? Well, in a sense it does, in a sense it doesn't. Okay, so suppose, so if we said it was reasonable here for B to assume that A will provide none of the public good because, you know, no matter how much B provides, if B provides some, the marginal benefit of additional units for A just goes down. It's never going to be as high as its marginal cost. Okay, but suppose B, perhaps foolishly in this case, assumed that A was going to provide some amount of the public good. Well, then B might choose to, if, if A was going to provide, let's say, 10 of the public good, then B would choose, would still, he would then start here, because this amount of Q had been provided, start here if we think about B's marginal benefit, and he would still provide some of the public good until we get to this point where additional units, this is point 60, where additional units no longer provide him as much marginal benefit as its cost. Okay, we could also talk about a case where they misinterpret what the other is going to do. So B, if B thought that A was going to contribute something, which in this case would kind of be a silly thought, and then of course A didn't, then maybe, maybe B would end up only providing, you know, the remaining, if A was providing 10, B thought, okay, so I can provide the remaining 50. Did I say 10 before? I meant 50. So, um, so if A provided 10, there's just not enough space here. B might think he was providing the remaining 50, but actually A wasn't providing any at all. So he, from B's standpoint, he hadn't actually best responded. Okay, but, you know, that wouldn't be an Nash equilibrium. And in this case, it wouldn't be rationalizable. Okay, but now let's take the problem as the text asked it and try to answer it correctly. Let me go back to the PowerPoint here. Okay, just to, just to show it on this, in this case, in this graphical case. Um, uh, so Q star is the optimal amount of the public good being provided. Uh, QB in this case is the amount that 
B would provide on his own if he thought that A was going to buy zero of the public good. If he thought that A was, in this case, going to buy, buy some of the public good, then he'd imagine, okay, I start here, so I just will keep buying until I get to where I think I am. But that would be some sort of coordination problem. Uh, anything else to say? No, I mean, it's perhaps easier to see here that at this point where B is providing the amount that he feels is optimal, the social marginal benefit still exceeds the marginal cost. Okay, now let's look at an example similar to, to, to the marginal... To, well, let's look at what the question in the text was asking more or less originally with marginal cost equals to 50, okay? Or in this, in this PowerPoint case with marginal cost equals to 2, okay? So here, if marginal cost equal to 50, remember that after 100 units, the social marginal benefit was just equal to the marginal benefit of B, of B right? With just the black line and the blue line converge together. So on the diagram in the PowerPoint, you, you also see that, right? So here, uh, this is B's marginal benefit, uh, but after this point, A is no longer getting a marginal benefit. So the social, the, the, so here's the social marginal benefit adding B's benefit and A's benefit together vertically. But after this point, the social marginal benefit is just B's benefit, B's marginal benefit, because A is no longer getting any benefit for units after seven and a half. Okay, and similarly, after 100 units in, a, in our uh, problem set, only B is getting marginal benefit. So what is the socially optimal provision? Well, here, I hope you can still see this. I'm just checking the camera here. Here, we're looking at a case where... Um, where uh, the marginal cost is in a range such as the social margin, such that the marginal cost is so low. So we have a marginal cost of 50, okay, 50 and 50, okay? The marginal, or this is the 50 here. The marginal cost is so low that uh, within the, for the quantity where marginal benefit equals social Marginal cost equals social marginal benefit. We're in the range where only person B gets any marginal benefit. Okay, it's going to be somewhere out here where A is over. It's greater than 100. A is no longer receiving benefit. So therefore, the social marginal benefit is just B's marginal benefit or 200 minus Q. Okay. Um, so in the in the PowerPoint, we're in a range. You see here where for this marginal cost of, in this case, two, um, it's, it's past the point where A is still getting any benefits. Okay? So, in fact, the social marginal benefit is just the marginal benefit of B for points between 100 and 200, or for points greater than 100 in the in the problem or for points greater than 7.5 in the PowerPoint. Um, what else do I want to say? Okay, yes. So what amount will be provided? Well, here, let's think about amounts that would be provided if B accurately had a sense of what A would choose to provide. Okay, so now if I look at what would A provide, well, now it's no longer so obvious that A should provide zero. Okay, um, we can get to it, but I won't but I won't show it to you for this case, okay? Let's just imagine that B accurately predicts or is responding, is, is doing his best response to what A is doing, okay? So A's best response, if A thought B would provide zero, then A would certainly provide some amount, both on the PowerPoint example and in the example I, I and, in the, and in the problem set example, okay? On the other hand, if A thought that B were going to provide more than whatever this amount is, um, in our example here, it'll be um, his marginal benefit is 100 minus Q. So uh, it's going to be where the marginal benefit is greater than 50. So we're 100 minus Q, sorry, less than 50. 100 minus Q is less than 50. Uh, so 100 minus Q is equal to 50 where Q equals to 50. So 
So this point is 50. So if, I believe, so if A, yeah, because it's slope one. So if A thought that B was going to provide more than 50, then A would choose to provide none. Okay, and let's suppose that A thinks that B is going to provide more than 50 for this example, or in the PowerPoint that it's going to provide more than whatever this is. I guess it's seven. No, it's not 7.5. Like maybe it's five. I guess it's five. I don't know. Um, so A is not going to provide any. B accurately believes that A is, you know, he or B is best responding to what A is doing. Maybe he knows, he reasonably thinks that A is not going to provide any, which actually turns out to also be reasonable in this case. Um, maybe I'll get to it. So B will provide how much? Well, B will say, all right, I'm going to, let's go to the PowerPoint. I will choose the point at which my marginal benefit equals the marginal cost. Because all units before this, or let's go over here, all units, it's this, all units before this, in this case 7.5, yielded me personally more marginal benefit than they cost me personally to provide. Okay. Now note that this point, at this point, only B is getting benefit, or I've said that a million times, or additional benefit. And note that this point is also, this point is the same as this point. It's also where social marginal benefit equals to social marginal cost. So because within the region that matters where marginal cost is so low as 50 or, or 2 in the, in the PowerPoint, um, because of that, then uh, the choices made by person B are actually the same choices as maximize social welfare, as the social planner would choose. Because within the range that matters, only B is getting additional benefit. So how much would B choose in our problem set, assuming that he perhaps correctly assumed that A was going to choose none, to provide none? B will choose to provide, uh, hopefully you can see this. So, so B's marginal benefit is 200 minus Q. So he's going to say, all right, 200 minus Q equals to the marginal cost of 50 equals 50. He's going to find this point here. It's going to say, okay, two Q, 200 minus Q equals 50, so 200 minus 50 is 150, so Q in this case will equal 150. That will be the QB, but if QA is providing none, then Q, if A is providing none, then QB equals Q. So let's just say that's equals to Q. Okay, and just to, to check, is it the same as what the social planner would choose? Well, if we're considering that we're going to be in a range where only B is receiving benefits, then the thing that optimizes social marginal benefit is again, 200 minus Q is equal to marginal cost, 50 or Q star equals to 50. So here, these are the same. Um, okay, one further point on that. Now this is getting even more, a little bit advanced. What would B's best response, okay, well, what would B's best response if A provided, say, two units? Well, B is, going, let's look at it graphically, B is going to, to think, okay, well, then, if A is providing two, I'm starting from this point, oops, I'm starting from this point here, so whatever I provide, I want it to take me all the way to here. So I'll provide my optimal amount minus what I think A is providing. So it would provide, in this case, 50 minus what he ever, um, in our problem set, 50 minus what he thinks A will provide. Um, for the case of, okay, so now, by the way, is it reasonable for A to provide some in this case? Well, that gets a bit tricky, but we could think whether it would be a Nash equilibrium for A, sorry, for B to provide, uh, sorry, this should have said, Two, Q star equals 150, which is the same as the amount that B chose. Okay, sorry, there was a... So, if B is providing 150, we can think about whether at least this is a Nash equilibrium. Is A best, respo is a best responding? Uh, I, would say, I would say he is, right? A, if A can't contribute less than zero, if B is contributing 150, so if QB equals 150 and QA and QA equals zero, then um, is QA best responding? Well, Q, oh, sorry, is A best responding? Well, we're at this point. We're at the, at the point uh, here in the, in the PowerPoint and here in our example. At this point, 
a if a were to provide a is providing zero if a were to provide any more clearly uh this is well this is well past the point way over here a is receiving actually zero marginal benefit so for a were to add to this it would totally not be worth him spending the 50 per unit it wouldn't make any sense right i mean because we're at a point where if we look at a we're you know we're way out here somewhere if we look at a actually we're here if we look at a's provision or a's marginal benefit at this point it's zero so a shouldn't add any more and he can't choose a negative quantity so a is best responding is b best responding well we already said that he was because we said what is b's best response to a choosing to provide zero so this is a nash equilibrium uh, whether it's the unique rationalizable response, I'd want to think about that a bit more. Okay, I went a bit too far here, but I just wanted to tie these concepts together.